Thank you, Brad. You can. Oh. Good. Okay. Oh. Now, making. You, you're just. I can't do any more. Making community work is disciplined, purposeful work. You can't be stubborn and think that you can do it all by yourself. If we recognize the gifts of God and grace all around us, and we truly embrace the opportunity to worship with an open heart, both in ways you're familiar with and in ways that maybe you didn't expect today, then today, Westmont is uniquely blessed with the opportunity to live in Christian community. Perhaps you come from a place that that was already the case. I didn't. I came from lots of places in the secular world where there were other sorts of communities that uh, weren't as kind or as supportive. So what I suggest is that you don't squander these years, these days in this place. That you work together in Christian community to strengthen each other and learn how to do that so that when you do leave this place, wherever you go, you can share something of it. And whenever you go, you know how to sustain the love that others have given to you. I really delight in the conflict that happens at Westmont faculty meetings. I wish that all of you could be with us in Hieronymus Lounge, because sometimes we disagree. <laughs> However, when we disagree, there is a sense in the room that we honor both the argument that the other person is giving and the character of the person that is giving it. In the world, when I encounter those kinds of disagreement or failings of people's systems, I find that they not only try to dishonor the objective but the per person driving toward it as well. Their motivation is torn down. That's the opposite of Christian community, of lifting up the person and encouraging and supporting who they are so that they'll be stronger as well as their argument. You guys are failing. Keep going. Keep going. I hope you heard Ben in chapel on Friday when he invited you to communion. <laughs> Sometimes it's about finding a new way, you know? Uh, I hope you were there in chapel when Ben invited you to communion. And he didn't have the arrogance to say that he had the answer to this mystery, to this incredible invitation of Christ to the table. He just extended it to you humbly and openly from his understanding and from what we could accept as the pure, simple invitation of Jesus. When our faculty disagree about the GE, we don't disagree about its purpose where we're going, what we want for our students to be caring, capable members of a community who can serve and build up the body of Christ in the kingdom of God. Have that sense about your colleagues, that you know their purpose in learning and in growing. How do you understand your relationships in the dorm, in the DC, or in the classroom, or even on the shuttle? Are you there with sisters and brothers in Christ? Are you competing with someone for a higher GPA or that last seat on the way to Vaughn's? Are you thinking of how much you can help others, or, how you, or how, how you compete with others, rather, or how you can help them achieve what they need? Are you filling a leadership position to pad your resume, or are you hanging around after chapel to stack up chairs to serve when you see a need? Or maybe you're serving in a leadership position with the heart of a servant, and you're staying around to serve when service is needed. Perhaps you have the highest GPA because in working with others in a study group, you learned how much more deeply you learn when you try to teach others. And so the dilemma was trying to serve, but what you kept getting was more and more and more. How do you keep giving when the harder you try to give, you realize that you're receiving more? It's a great dilemma. Make this place a place where you joy in that dilemma of giving more than you can possibly give, but you keep getting more than you can possibly imagine. Challenge your yourself to find ways to make this environment unique. Examine your actions to refine your contribution to Christ and the Christ-like nature of this place by your participation in relationships. We are called for a future, and we struggle to listen to the GPS, you might call it the gospel positioning system, that will show us the way. What's next? Where do I go after? All of our questions. But Joshua says that we must listen for today. We must do it now while there's still a time that we can call today. Our present calling goes way beyond the community life standards or open doors uh, during uh, visitation hours. It calls us to a commitment to each other, to be willing to lend your strength when others are failing. Tom, that was a really short round. That was not good. In, in every, any endeavor, 
The only way to get stronger is a consistent and purposeful work toward that strengthening goal. It really helps to have a coach, or in the case of a worship life, a pastor. And as Ben said, that's one of the reasons that we do chapel three times a week. It's the spiritual discipline of coming back and doing it again and again. We gather for a time full of various expressions and voices, for times when we can step in and encourage our sisters and brothers to witness to participation in integrity, and sometimes even offering them little reminders. Look around in worship. Perhaps you see an open laptop or an open book. You, know, you might just encourage that person to use that open laptop or that open book to take notes on the message being given, or perhaps to close it for the duration of worship. Maybe you're standing next to a brother or sister who really isn't singing. Great opportunity to reach out to them and tell them that you'd like to hear their voice because it would help you sing better. Perhaps there's someone who's not sure they're going to go to chapel because they're worried about something else or a test or something coming up in their life. It's a great opportunity with integrity to witness and share and build community by inviting them to come and then find God's sustaining grace, God's answer to the questions that they're asking. That's Christian community. That's what we're called to do. People not being part of worship is not their problem. It's ours. We need to invite them, be active and engage everybody in this place and beyond into worship. Well, we have one song, a final song of calling that calls us to the city of God that Augustine talked about, calls us to serve one another, to love one another, and to be a part of that worshiping community. And you sustained that beautifully. Thanks, team of sustainers. Well done. Please stand to sing.